Now let's talk about camera performance. First we will talk about speed of continuous shooting. Speed of continuous shooting is measured in frames per second and shows how many images your camera is capable of taking in a row with shutter button held down in multi-continuous shooting mode. This can be important for sports or wildlife photography, where every moment counts. Even though the fastest in the world camera can shoot 5 trillion frames per second, the consumer camera is considered very fast even at 8 frames per second, with 4 frames per second being probably the average. I also want to mention shutter lag. Shutter lag is a delay between triggering the shutter and when the photograph is actually recorded. It can be important for action photography. It is a combination of two different processes, time to autofocus and time for shutter release. Shutter lag time varies greatly from camera to camera. Usually the more expensive cameras have less of lag than cheaper ones. One of the ways to shorten the shutter lag is to pre-focus manually or automatically and then switch to manual focus. Different cameras also can have a different maximum shutter speed. As you probably already know, fast shutter speed can do two things. First of all, it can freeze the subject while it's moving fast and also it can help to cut the light when we are using wide aperture in the bright light conditions. Most cameras have maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000 of the second. Some of them even can go as fast as 1 8,000 of the second. But it will be really hard to find something which moves so fast that we will need this shutter speed. Maybe hummingbird wings? If you know about something else, please post in the comments. In most situations, shutter speed of 1 1000 of the second will be just enough even for very fast objects. On the other hand, shutter speed of 1 4000 of the second or even 1 8000 of the second can come handy if you would like to photograph something in very bright light while using very wide aperture, so you can achieve a shallow depth of field. Remember Sunny 16 rule. Number 15 is a front lit subject under average sunny daylight conditions. If you would like to use F2 to photograph it, you will need to use shutter speed of 1 8000 of the second to have seen probably exposed at ISO 100. You also might have heard about startup delay. This refers to how long it takes to turn on the camera and take a photo. In most cameras it really takes milliseconds and personally I would not even pay attention to this parameter. Now let's talk about the number of focus points. Focus points are the little empty squares or dots what you see when you look through the viewfinder. Entry-level DSLRs generally have simpler autofocusing system with a fewer focus points, while pro-level DSLRs have more complex system with lots of focusing points. This is a comparison between pro camera Nikon D750, which has 51 focus points, and entry-level D3300, which has just 11 focus points. Multiple focus points help you to focus in more places in the scene, not just in the middle, without having to recompose. Though some photographers think that too many focus points is not that convenient, since you have to take more steps to get to where you need to with your focus. The good news is that with a lot of pro cameras you can choose how many focus points you would like to use. But all focus points are not made even. It is because, in order to autofocus, camera is looking for contrast in the scene. 
Basic autofocus points in an autofocus system can only detect horizontal or vertical contrast, but not both. Though there are cross-type focus points that can detect both horizontal and vertical contrast, making them the most sensitive and reliable focus points to use. Different cameras have different number and different position of cross-focus points. For example, Nikon D5300 has nine cross-focus points and they are all in the middle, which is not very helpful. On the other hand, in Canon EOS 7D Mark II, all 65 focus points are cross-type, which is awesome. Now let's talk about image stabilization. It prevents blurry images from camera shake while you are holding the camera at slower shutter speed. Of course, it all depends on the camera and the lens, but in some cases with image stabilization, you will be able to use three, four stops slower shutter speed than you would normally use and still get sharp images. So for example, if uh, without image stabilization, you are able to hold the camera at one, one twenty-fifth of the second and not get a camera shake, with image stabilization, you could hold the camera with shutter speed of one eighth of the second and still get sharp image. There are two types of image stabilization, in camera image stabilization and also in lens image stabilization. The advantage of having in camera image stabilization is that you can use it with a variety of lenses without having to have image stabilization inside the lens, though it might not be effective with some longer lenses. This is when image stabilization in the lens could be a better idea, though not all lenses have it and also lenses with image stabilization are usually more expensive. Nikon and Canon are big on in lens image stabilization. On the other hand, Sony and Pentax prefer in camera image stabilization. Please click to go to part 5 about special features of the camera. And don't forget to subscribe, follow, check out my website easy-exposure.com.